Nicole Stott describes herself as an artist and astronaut. On the International Space Station in 2009, and a mission specialist on the final mission of Space Shuttle Discovery in 2011, she used her artwork to share the beauty of planet Earth that she experienced through the windows of the Space Shuttle. When I spoke with Nicole, she was saying that how beautiful as she was traveling through space and looking back at Earth, this urgency and, and, and desire to record and express what she could see from space. What we are about to see are her creations and collaborations that inspire people and even provide important therapy for children suffering from cancer. Nicole, we welcome you on the stage. that simple, short, actually I think too short, <laughs> glimpse, glimpse of our planet from space. And I am, I am really happy to be here today. Uh, I love to see that we have a full auditorium. I think that this topic of the blend of science and art is uh, historically, I think, has been there all the time, but I think these days it's, it's coming more and more into our daily conversation. And I certainly know that within NASA it is. I thank Deva for um, the inspiration she's provided with that. I think she has really taken it up a notch in terms of how we accept and acknowledge that this is a very, very important part of how we explore. I started with that that glimpse of Earth, because I can tell you, uh, I feel like uh, after having the experience, um, the blessing of flying in space a couple times and, and witnessing our planet that way, I feel like I have a little bit better understanding of the word awe. And I think there is that one word, awesome, that, that totally describes um, the experience of seeing Earth from space. Our planet glows. There is no doubt when you look at it that you understand that it is dynamic and alive. Everything about it is, is telling you that it's alive, it is perfectly placed at this distance from the sun uh, for us to survive. It takes beautiful care of us. And I believe, in, along with the words that David was sharing as well, we are obligated to take care of it. And all of this scientific data that we are being provided through our missions are helping us understand better what our role as Earthlings should be in that whole process. Um, I would also say I, I, I start with this picture um, following the video because while it is a still image, um, I think that for me it is the best expression of what it was like to live and work in space. Uh, when we're in space, we're traveling at 17,500 miles an hour around the planet, five miles a second. And so every 90 minutes we go around the Earth and we have this opportunity to see a sunrise or a sunset in that time. And so in this picture I see one of these sunrises and sunsets. I think you have to agree it's a beautiful image as well. And I can tell you that any view out the window from space is beautiful, there's no denying that. But in this, in this picture also, I can remember the fact that I actually was in space. Um, it is a very surreal experience to have had, and I'm very thankful that I have the opportunity now to share it. I'm also very thankful for the pictures and videos because um, in my mind, I think I have snapshots, but not a total recollection of what uh, the experience was like. But this picture also has the space shuttle in it, this, this beautiful silhouette of the space shuttle. Um, this picture was taken by my crewmates who were still on the space station. And it is um, 
a picture of my return home after my first flight. So uh, a very simple image, but for me it represents a lot of what the entire experience was like being in space. And I am now on this journey from astronaut to artist. I can tell you it's, it was a difficult thing to decide to, to move from a job like an astronaut, um, one I dreamed of forever, to uh, this, this path now as an artist. And, um, and I, like, like Davis said, it's, it's wonderful to follow someone who has shared such wonderful, wonderful thoughts with you already because uh, I love that this idea of the earth is art. For me, uh, the view out the window was art. I was blessed to see it, and I now am um, inspired to share it. To share it in a way that shares, of course, my, my experience in space and the wonders of what we're doing in space off the earth, for the earth, but also as earth appreciation for us to be able to look at Earth and, and honor this place that we are and, and realize that we are responsible for, for taking care of it as well as it takes care of us. Um, in this little glimpse of, of my path from astronaut to artist, I first had to get to astronaut. And uh, I can tell you the, um, the main way that I did that was um, through the inspiration of my family. Um, I started out um, growing up with a family who spent a lot of time out at the local airport and flying in airplanes like this. My dad built and, and flew uh, airplanes as a passion for fun. And I was, uh, at the time, not even realizing it, that for the rest of my life I would be inspired by these times in this airplane. And I think it's a beautiful airplane. If you look at this, the craftsmanship that went in to building an aircraft like this. Um, the technology that's there as well. Uh, I know for a fact that all of my bicycles growing up were painted with these different colors as this airplane was being built in our garage. And I know that my dad felt both uh, a, a passion for that creativity and that craftsmanship that went into this, this aircraft as much as he did for the technology of what it would take to fly the airplane. I'm very thankful that he shared that passion with me, that I discovered this love for flying and wanting to know how things fly. And I, I believe if you want to know how things fly, airplanes fly, you're going to want to know how spaceships fly. And I can tell you that in this path to astronaut, um, my first glimpse of our planet, my first time separating from Earth and looking at the Earth from above was in airplanes like this. And it was before I could even pop my head over the top of that front cockpit. And so my first sight of Earth from above was probably in a roll or upside down in one of these airplanes, peering at my, my neighborhood and, and seeing all the little cars and houses. But I think reflecting on that, I think really starting to get a glimpse of how the Earth is a much smaller place than, than we think of when we're in our own place. Um, to see other neighborhoods that I thought were so much further away from me, but really are not that far. And to gain that perspective was a really, really important um, part in my life. Uh, somehow along the way, uh, we'll, we'll skip forward here because um, quite a while went by from being in those little airplanes to uh, being selected, and I will say by some act of God, I believe, being selected into the 18th group of NASA astronauts. Um, I show this picture because I think that it, ref it reflects very well the idea that it takes all kinds. And I'm so pleased that NASA now selects astronauts that are uh, a mix across our, uh, so many communities. Um, I think we have much more successful missions because of the mix of people that we have. And I mean that not just from the, the technological or science backgrounds that people have, but because of the mix of personality, the mix of experiences, the mix of things people enjoy doing outside of work. And I look at this picture, I smile, because um, as a class, we only knew each other about two weeks when we took this picture. We all came to that seat in very different ways. We have 
engineers and scientists, oceanographers, geophysicists, medical doctors, the test pilots, all of these different people sitting in the same picture. And what I try to tell people, especially kids, is there is no checklist to becoming an astronaut. And I think that's true for, for most things in life. You certainly have the basic requirements, and you can find those on the NASA or the ESA website. But outside of that, it is wide open. In addition to the medical doctors and geophysicists and oceanographers and engineers, if you look at these people from what they do outside of work, we have a near professional water skier, uh, an, an artist in Karen Nyberg, the young lady with the long blonde hair, who is the most wonderful artist I've ever met in my entire life. She actually quilted on Space Station. It was fantastic. Um, we have uh, race car drivers, people who remodel homes, uh, a wonderful chef. I mean, just this blend of personalities that makes the selection of a crew a much more uh, interesting thing as well. And I think it makes for a much more successful mission as well. And so that creativity behind these people is a really, really wonderful thing. Because can you imagine going to space, living on the space station for six months, or traveling to Mars over several years, um, the, the travel to get there, the time on the planet, and hopefully the return uh, with people, with five other people just like you? I think that would be a really, really boring experience. I think it would be a less successful mission um, that way. It would certainly be easier maybe from a decision-making standpoint, but I think in, you know, in terms of the overall mission success, it would be a lot less than if we have this blend of really interesting backgrounds to, to leverage for this. And this, of course, is not our serious class picture. This is our, our fun one, and I love it because I look at these people and I see the personality of all of them in this picture now. And we didn't know each other very long in this picture. And, and all, I see the personality of all of them and that is very important. Like Davis said as well, it, it does uh, become about the people. Um, there is certainly the hardware though. And when we think about artistry and creativity, uh, I can't look at this picture of the space shuttle and not believe all of that was part of what created this very, very special uh, spacecraft. To me, this is a very simple, like simply elegant photo of the space shuttle. And at the same time, it's really compelling to me. It's very powerful because there is a complexity inside of this spacecraft that we hadn't seen before the spacecraft was, was developed. And this is a picture of the last rollout of Discovery from the um, processing facility from the big hangar out to the launch pad. And it is, I think, the most beautiful picture I've, I have ever seen of it. Um, I, I have to show it because, uh, to me, it just sums up this, this beauty, beauty of art and science coming together to get us to space, to help us do things that um, several years ago we might have thought was impossible. And if you think the space shuttle is beautiful from the outside, I can tell you that launching on it from the inside, you get this sense of the beauty um, in a very different way, a very powerful way. It takes a lot of energy for us to get off the ground. It takes a lot of energy for us to separate ourselves from this gravity of our planet and get into Earth's orbit. And I think you can see the power of that in this image. I think that, um, that what, what we see in this, in this picture is kind of that culmination of, of why we design and develop spacecraft like this. Um, it is to take us somewhere where we're going to learn new things about ourselves, where we're gonna learn new things about our planet, and we're gonna new, learn new things about exploring further off of our planet. Um, each astronaut has their own story about that power and what it feels like uh, to come off of the Earth for the first time in a spacecraft. Um, I felt like uh, I needed to share that um, through a painting, and, and art has been my, my choice of, of a way to communicate since retiring from uh, the NASA astronaut office. Uh, you'll notice that this, this painting doesn't look exactly like that, that image we just saw. But I think it's because in the painting I'm trying to express more of what it felt like to be on that space shuttle. And I think if I painted this again, 
I might actually have all that orange completely surrounding, <laughs> completely surrounding the spacecraft with a little glimpse of the, the black sky that's turned blue from all of that light because I can tell you inside of that spacecraft, you feel like it is just roaring fire below you. You cannot believe that there's anything but this, this stack of fire and exhaust taking you into space. So, so to me, that's what I tried to represent uh, in this painting. Where we're traveling these days is to the International Space Station. And I look at the spacecraft as, I think, a beautiful um, masterpiece, a, a cathedral in space. Um, you cannot deny, I don't think, the, the beauty of this, of this spacecraft. The fact that we do have this international partnership that's allowed us to put this in space to where it almost looks like it's just hanging there. And you almost can't believe that it can be uh, in orbit for this past 16 years with people living and working successfully and peacefully on board it. It just doesn't look like it could, could happen, but it is there. And I can tell you that it is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. And it's everything from the, these ginormous, in the words of my son, solar arrays that collect and uh, generate all of the electricity on the station. Uh, when you think about a, a, an off the earth, um, off the grid kind of system, this is it. We should be looking at this as an example of how we live on Earth as well. And that's not just from the technology side, but from the international relationship side, the partnerships that we've developed as part of this program that have allowed us, I think, to not only operate very successfully and peacefully in space, but to do so in that same kind of way down here on Earth. I did feel the need to paint this one too, and that's because this was, that, that picture was my, my last view of the space station uh, when I was coming home uh, after the last flight of Discovery. And again, uh, almost a childish kind of uh, representation of the hardware, but I think in my eyes it was this colorful. What I remember seeing was something glowing like this. What I remember seeing was, you know, kind of a sparkly looking spacecraft, and I've tried to represent that in this painting. Um, the people in space are, are what make it. Sh being able to share that experience with other people who are, are professionals, who know their jobs, who you know if something goes wrong, you're going to be able to count on them. You're going to come together as a team, as a crew, to handle it but to also know that you're gonna have a good time, that there is a personality behind the crew. Just like that picture of, of my astronaut class, I think when, when I look at this, I see that representation of the creativity and the diversity and the excitement and all of these people that are getting to experience this very special thing. And that's what makes a mission so incredible and successful. And this picture in particular, uh, when we think about the arts and how it comes together with science. Uh, I was very fortunate to be on board station with, with all of my crewmates here. Um, the gentleman in this picture on the screen, second um, from the left on the bottom row, is Guy La Liberté, and he is the founder of Cirque du Soleil. And he apparently had a spare, I don't know, $40 million or so. <laughs> to hitch a ride on, on the Soyuz um, to come to station for about 10 days. And I think it's really interesting how somebody like Guy, uh, very passionate about art, very passionate about creativity. If you've ever been to a Cirque du Soleil show, you know that there is a power in these people and there is um, an inspiration in these people that I, I just can't even imagine. But he felt like space, would be the best platform for communicating those kinds of artistic things, but also take it to the next level of his own personal mission of sharing what life on Earth, um, for a lot of people, without clean drinking water, he had his own personal mission about educating a larger population about life on Earth for, for some who don't get to have clean drinking water and how we can improve things like that, and did a whole show on water uh, as a result of his um, mission in space. Um, and there's some water. 
uh, behaves a little bit differently when you take gravity out of the equation. And I think that's a, it's a really wonderful thing. This is a classic shot that um, any astronaut will do in space. Uh, you get this really cool reflection, um, this upside down, you know, the whole um, optics and the way reflection works inside of that, that sphere of water. But, but to me, this also speaks to the kinds of things that we can do in space that we can't do here on Earth. The reason why we go to space and the why, reason why we want to look at things a little bit differently. When we take gravity out of the equation, we can learn such wonderful things about how things like water or flames or crystals or our own bodies work. That's gonna help us improve life here on Earth for everyone, but also help us do that exploration further and further off our planet. To become that multi-planet species is, is really interesting, and I think about that just by looking at this one uh, this one sphere of water hanging in space. Now, there are, there are many highlights to living and working in space. I will tell you that one of them, probably at the top of the list, um, right, right there with floating and getting to fly, that very liberating uh, experience of floating and flying uh, in zero gravity, um, is the opportunity to look out the window to experience Earth in a way that you just can't from, from here on the planet. Um, to, to be able to take that in, to be able to have that vantage point and experience a whole new perspective. Um, I, I think you don't have to go to space to do that, though. I think there are plenty of ways just traveling outside of your own neighborhood will give you a new, a new perspective on things. But looking out the window of a spacecraft is uh, certainly a very special thing. I'm very thankful for this picture uh, on the left that my, um, that my colleague uh, and crewmate Steve Bowen took while he was out on a spacewalk. Uh, definitely reminds me that I had the opportunity to look out those windows. And then this, this picture in the cupola module, um, the Italian-built uh, module that we have on the bottom side of our space station, basically a big bay window that allows us to see this wonderful horizon-to-horizon -horizon view of, of Earth. And it's also mm -hmm. a very wonderful uh, platform for uh, the robotics operations that we do. Flying the big robotic arm, the big white crane that allows us to move hardware and people around on the outside of the space station. Uh, we do that from inside of this cupola module as well. But certainly the views of Earth are, are the thing I remember the most um, from the view through those windows. I think that, uh, like most things, um, there's kind of an evolution to the way we look at things. Um, for me, looking out the window started with looking for things that were familiar to me. And I, I grew up in Florida, so I wanted very badly to see what Florida would look like from space. And if I knew we were going to be flying over Florida, I would fly as fast as I could to the window to try and see it. And, and Florida, like every place else, is beautiful from space. Um, it gives you, again, that new perspective on, on where, we, where we're from, where all of us are from as, as Earthlings. And very thankful to have now this connection uh, to where I grew up um, by seeing it from space. The next stage for me was uh, this appreciation of where I was living, this, this space station that I was on, and being able to see that, uh, the view, pieces of the station, very beautiful pieces of the space station, kind of with the backdrop of Earth. Um, I love this picture because these, this is a little section of our, our solar arrays. Of course, we're sucking in all of that, that solar energy from the sun to generate our own electricity on the space station. But in the background, to have this uh, sunset happening at the same time, to me it was just kind of a, a really nice story about um, how we live in space through the power of the sun. There's, there's a transition you have to go through in your brain, too. Um, there's a lot of things that happen when you're living in space that you just your brain and your body have to get used to. Um, there's you know your bones and your muscles um, deciding to go away because you don't need, need them anymore when you're in space and us having to do all kinds of things, exercising two hours a day to counteract that. But there's also looking at things like this that at first do not make any sense to your brain. 
This is my, my crewmate, Al. He is crawling along the bottom of the space station. And when you first look at it, you worry about Al and wonder, why isn't Al falling? You know, you, you want to make sure Al isn't going to fall off of the space station. But then your brain figure out, figures out very quickly that that's not going to happen to Al. In fact, Al feels like he's just crawling along the stage and doesn't get any sense of up or down or that he's you know, maybe going to fall. There's an evolution to uh, a geography lesson. There is no better place to learn about our planet than, than looking at it from space. And uh, as a crew, we would challenge each other to know where it was we were flying over, to be the first one to find the target that, was, um, that we were flying over. In this case, the pyramids, if you can see them. Um, and, and I think this picture was taken by Gennady Padalka. He was really, really good at catching stuff and um, taking pictures of tiny little things on the Earth. But it was really interesting to learn more about the geography of Earth, and then to get to the point where it didn't really matter where you were, but that you were being presented with some of the most beautiful artwork um, that any planet, I think, can, can present. Um, this is a picture of a salt lake in Australia, Lake Eyre. And to me, I think, when I look at it, I think Georgie O'Keeffe painting. I think big, beautiful pink flower just presenting itself um, from our planet. This is a naturally shaped island in the Red Sea. Um, there are places like this all over the planet. I think, I think we're meant to discover them. I think they were put there on purpose for us to find them. And I love this little heart in the, in the middle of the sea. And it makes me think that God must have a really wonderful sense of humor because I think there is purpose in this. I think us being able to see our whole planet the way we can from space, there's purpose in it. And I think a lot of that purpose is for us to realize how significant we really are. Um, that placement of Earth with respect to the sun is significant. We might be tiny in the grand scheme of the universe, but that does not mean insignificance. Um, a little bit closer, a little further from that sun would not be so good for us. And so I think when we think about it that way, when we appreciate where we are, it's a, it's a really wonderful discovery um, from looking at us back from space. Um, this picture, as it turns out, is one of, a, one of if not my favorite from uh, my time in space. Probably had an 800 millimeter lens um, taking this picture. This is a tiny little chain of islands on the northern coast of Venezuela called Las Rocas. And when I looked at it, even looking through the window and seeing this through my camera lens, it's like somebody had painted a wave on the ocean. To me, it looks like a wave, this tiny little chain of islands, and it, it looks like a wave was painted on the ocean. And when I was on the space station, and I, I had taken a small watercolor kit with me um, to, to paint while I was there, I really only had the time to paint one time while I was there. And I can tell you, you can't sit in front of the window and paint what you're going to paint, because it goes by way too quickly. So you have to take a picture. And this wave was the, the thing that stood out the most to me as, as what I was inspired to paint. I think this is all about inspiration. Why we go and spend time on the space station is about inspiration. And this one, this one image has stuck with me. Um, it's stuck with me on, on station and it's sticking with me now as, as the inspiration for, for my artwork. Um, I've taken that watercolor that I did from space and I've done several interpretations of, of that image. I have started out very small. I've got little like two inch by three inch uh, images of Las Rocas on metal that I've embellished like this with, um, with glass pieces and with sand and with these wonderful translucent iridescent oil paints that I've found that I think best represent what I remember seeing through the window of the space station. I've gone from the tiny small format to I think two feet by three feet uh, versions of this same, this same image. At some point maybe I'll tire of it, I don't know. Every time I do another version I feel like I'm, I'm in some way, maybe it's selfishly 
maybe it's for myself that I'm doing this, but I like to think that I'm, I'm doing it in a way that hopefully will share, even if it's a tiny glimpse of that glow, that, that beauty that I saw of our planet from the space station. And this is just a selection of some of the other pieces that I've done, all inspired by, by those views uh, of Earth from space, the art of our Earth from space. Top left is another couple um, salt lakes, this time in South Africa. And I painted this one because my son actually saw this picture in my collection. And uh, to him, it reminded him of Iron Man and the mask of Iron Man. So that's why, that's why we painted that one. Um, the, the, the image in the center is a painting um, in the surrounding area of that little heart, um, that Dahul Island in the Red Sea. This is, uh, I call it the Red Sea Dancer. To me, it looks like a profile of, you know, of a dancer um, kind of arabesquing across, across the, the uh, sea there. Uh, a version of Dahul on the right. Um, bottom left is that uh, pink flower of Lake Eyre in Australia. And then uh, one of the most beautiful places on the planet, um, that whole stretch of ocean from the southern tip of Florida to the northern coast of Venezuela. This is the Bahamas and tongue of the ocean area um, seen there. And then bottom right, uh, I, I like that um, Others have been inspired by my experience. I, th I think that's one of the most important things to me is that if I can take what I've experienced, share that with others and have them find some inspiration in it is, is a really huge thing to me. And this painting in the bottom right is by uh, an artist friend of mine who, who took that picture of me in the cupola and turned it into something to another new perspective of that experience for me. And I, I have this hanging in my studio now and it, it reminds me that I really have been very blessed to uh, experience what I have. I think one of um, the most interesting things I'm finding though is that I believe what we're doing in space is of huge significance to us as humanity, to us as earthlings to our ability to explore and learn new things about why we're here, but also about, about places that we've never been yet. And, and ultimately, we do these things, I believe, to improve life here on Earth. Uh, one of the greatest gifts I've had since retiring from the astronaut office is the opportunity to take that spaceflight experience and do be a part of this, this project called the Spacesuit Art Project. And this is a par project that I was invited to participate on. Um, it is, I think, the most meaningful thing I have ever, su ever supported. And it is a wonderful blend of the inspiration that comes from space and technology, but presenting it through art. And in this case, art as a way to healing. And this is a project where we're actually taking children's artwork. And these are children from, that are in treatment at the hospital in uh, Houston, Texas, MD Anderson Cancer Center. And if you look at the suit on the left, um, this suit is named Hope. And uh, it is each one of those little paintings on that suit is by a child in, in that hospital. And then it's quilted so beautifully together by our spacesuit making company, ILC Dover, and they've done it to the same patterns as our actual spacesuits. And it is a beautiful life-sized uh, artistic creation that is even more beautiful than any one of the individual paintings that, that it's made from. And, and the message of inspiration is huge in, in, in these spacesuits. Um, we took uh, another suit, the a flight suit version because we knew we wouldn't be able to fly Hope to station. Uh, we had this goal of getting one of these spacesuits to space station, and Dava, thank you, and to all of all of our friends at NASA for facilitating this. Um, this second suit, Courage, is currently on the space station right now. This is a picture of astronaut Kate Rubens. Uh, she wore the suit on station, and in this suit. Our, our kids painted directly onto it. And we were able to fold it up into a tiny little package and get it up on one of the SpaceX Dragon vehicles uh, to the space station. And, and in this picture, Kate is actually doing a, 
uh, video conference with some of the children from the hospital. We had them in mission control. And to me, this really and truly was, I believe, the first art exhibit in space. To see these colors against the backdrop of, of the space station was, it was stunning. And I hope that it's, as the first, that to me implies there will be following. And whether that's projecting art on the outside of the station, or having some kind of, I don't know, maybe performance art happen inside the station. I believe our Japanese colleagues have already tried to do things like this, and, and perhaps we could expand on that. Um, perhaps there will be more astronauts wanting during their time and space to, uh, to create things. We have people play musical instruments there. Um, we've had flutes on station. There's a keyboard and a guitar on the space station. And, uh, and you know, people feel like they want to um, have those, those personal items and those personal experiences while they're there as well. And I think if we can do more um, sharing of that, it, it will be really impactful for all of us here on Earth as well. We have a third suit in work. Um, this one I'm especially proud of because we have modeled the, the design of this suit after the partnership of the International Space Station. Uh, it's an international version of the suit. Uh, my colleague Ian Sion, who is, he is actually the artistic genius behind, uh, behind these suits. He's the director of the Arts and Medicine program at MD Anderson. And we traveled to all of the headquarters cities for the space station program. And we painted with children in the hospitals there. We invited uh, astronauts and cosmonauts that were local to the area to come paint with us as well. And these uh, triangle um, versions of the paintings are the ones that the kids did. We collected all of that artwork. And now the Hope suit, the, or the uh, Unity suit, uh, the third is uh, in production at ILC Dover. And we're looking very shortly to having uh, that suit available for display as well. I'd like to close with, um, with this image. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna bring up my computer here because I want to read some words from astronaut Shannon Lucid, who was on the mission that delivered the Galileo spacecraft um, and deployed it 27, about 27 years ago this time now. And the Galileo spacecraft, it was deployed um, by Shannon on the Atlantis space shuttle. And it is, of course, named after our Galileo, your Galileo. Um, it made a six-year journey uh, to Jupiter. And I love thinking about Juno there now and how we've had these stepping stones to, to these planets in our solar system. It's, it's just incredible to me to think about it. And to think about a six-year journey to get, to get to that planet. And before that, the challenges that, that we had to go through to even get this spacecraft launched, just incredible. But I wanted, I wanted to read this short excerpt from an article um, that Shannon was in where she described the experience of, of participating and deploying the spacecraft. For almost a dozen years, Lucid had lived and worked with the reality that her job was an overwhelmingly technical one drawing from its roots in engineering and pure science. But on this day, as Galileo and its inertial upper stage booster floated silently into the inky void, she beheld a new reality, the romance of adventure. Emblazoned across the base of the spacecraft, which would one day circle Jupiter and deposit an instrumented probe into its atmosphere were two names, Galileo in script and NASA in worm-like block capitals. To Lucid, these two words symbolized exactly what the mission stood for. The script represented the romance of adventure and exploration, whilst the worm was indicative of the outstanding engineering and scientific talent which had brought this awesome project from the drawing board to fruition. I think those are just wonderful thoughts. I think it's why we're here. There is a romance and an adventure associated with all of these things in exploration that we're doing. And what better way than through art and creativity and innovative kinds of ideas that can be presented and communicated through art than to express what we're doing in these kinds of new adventures. 
I think when we look back at the challenges that we're having, that we've had in going to Mars, we'll feel some of the same thing. We'll look back and we'll wonder how, after, like with Galileo, after six years of traveling to the planet, with only an expected uh, operational life of two years, did that vehicle then go on to successfully provide us with new discoveries over eight years? Just amazing. I think we're going to be thinking about some of these same things after we put um, boots on Mars, like Deva said. It's, it's going to be just incredible to us to even imagine that we were able to do it. I think also that we are at the point, as Earthlings, where we need to start having everyone use their whole brains. I, you know, I hear a lot about, you know, a left brain, right brain, your science or your tech, your art, or, and I, I get frustrated because in school I see my son being funneled, you know, they're trying to funnel him one way or the other. And I think the more we use our whole brain, the better off we'll be. And I think that uh, in this room, it's really exciting to me to see you all here, because I think that's what you must be feeling as well, that while you may have really wonderful artistic talents, the use of that in expressing what we're doing scientifically, with technology, with industrial design, those kinds of things need to come together for us to be successful and for us to overcome the challenges uh, that we have here on Earth. Uh, I, I really am very thankful to have been included today. Dave, I thank you for the invitation. Um, to the, the whole entire Florence local community for welcoming this. Um, Steve, for, um, for inviting me to participate as well. Uh, th this is a, a very important message. And, and I'm very thankful to have just some tiny little piece in sharing my own spaceflight experience to help encourage this tie, this just natural interface between art and science to continue and to help us grow and learn and stay curious and all of those kinds of things that are involved with adventure and exploration. Thank you.